Welcome back to the Daily Grind, everyone. I'm here on a cold, wet, rainy day in South Texas, getting ready to plant some garlic. It is November 12th, and I've got three different kinds here. All of them soft neck, by the way, so there's two types of garlic. There's a soft neck and a hard neck, and the hard neck needs a certain amount of chill hours, which I don't get here in Texas. Now, there are some hacks around that where you can still plant some hard necks by putting them in the fridge for a while. However, those don't store as long. They do have some more potent flavors and some interesting stuff, at least from what I read. But I figure this is the first time I'm planting garlic ever. And I'm going to stick with what I know is going to grow well in my area instead of something that can be more difficult. So I've got three different types of uh, soft neck. I'm going to see which ones do well. The varieties I've got are Inchileum. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. But I'll write everything in the description section. Uh, Nutka Rose and Transylvania, which I like. <laughs> Transylvania, that's awesome. Um, so, I've got this bed. I grew some beans in here, which beans or any of the legumes, basically. Most of them, at least. We'll get all the nitrogen out of the air and send it down to their roots and form little nodules in the soil, which they feed on as nitrogen. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. I could be wrong a little bit, but I do know that basically they add nitrogen to the soil instead of deplete it which is perfect because garlic and onions and most of the alliums love high nitrogen. There are a few beans in here still that I accidentally left, and that's okay. They'll pop up. I can, I can easily see them. They're a broadleaf. I can tell the difference between the two, and I'll pick those up if they start to sprout. But I still have a lot of the vegetation on top, and you can see there's a lot of mold growth. And these, this sat for two weeks. Most of this has started to break down. I think it's doing pretty good. I'm going to till this a little bit into the soil to give a little better aeration, which is great for growing these. And then we'll go ahead and plant them. So I'm just going to use this little tiller thing. You step on it and you turn it. And that just basically works up that soil. And it's already very loose soil because those beans had a bunch of roots in there that have now broken down really, really soft, aerated soil. So this is going to be great for this garlic. I'm so used to having to step real hard on this to get it down. This bean pod, get rid of that. You see those roots? Some of them haven't broken down. A lot of the smaller ones have. This was, most of these were much more widespread. So, just the bigger ones are still intact. Next, I'm just going to turn this over with the pitchfork. All right, last but not least, we need to use this rake and get this to be about as even as possible. And then some of this extra vegetation, I'm just going to pull out. Keep nice solid dirt on top and these rakes kind of help you do that all right so that's pretty well evened out there was a few spots that had just way too much of this uh hay that i had used as mulch i had turned it into the soil but it keeps coming back up and it's a pain i mean it will break down over time it still hasn't it's like six eight months since i put it in there it's always been under there, so I'm not sure why it's not breaking down as fast as I thought it would, but I did take a little out. Let's go ahead and start planting. I think it's ready. So like I said, I'm new to this, guys, but I have done a little research on this. First, like I always do, I'm going to take a marker and let me know where I planted what variety, okay? That's super important for me. And on these, each one of them, I put how far spacing so I don't have to go look it up each time in case I need to thin. Now, these I'm gonna place where I'm gonna plant them, so I don't need to worry about thinning, but it did help right now because I need to know it's six inches. And I know this is eight inches right here. And so I'm right about six inches. At the corner of my thumb there, that's six inches. So it gives me six inches from there. I'll plant the first one right in the corner there. And the same thing as it goes down. So now I'm gonna leave a lot of space in between because in between I'm gonna plant some other like root veggies and and lettuce and stuff since I only, I'm just testing this out, growing a couple varieties. So next I'm gonna plant this. So this is a direct center right there, but I got two bars. So I am gonna plant a little far from the bars. 
So we'll put the next marker there, that's the Transylvania. And we'll put the next one down here, which is six inches from the end. And the other reason I'm doing this is most bugs do not like garlic. And so I'm gonna plant these, they'll be here until next year. They will die back a little bit in the winter from what I'm reading. But come spring, whatever I plant in the center here, whether it be tomatoes or um, lettuce or whatever, um, they will be protected from the bugs. So that's going to be a big benefit because they will be lined with this garlic and most of the bugs don't like the smell of garlic. Inchiletum, let's look. There we go, there's the inchiletum. Everyone has seen garlic in the past. Uh-oh. Those got moldy. That got moldy. Let's see. Hopefully some of these are good. All right, this one seems pretty good. All right. What I've been reading on garlic is, first off, it needs to be this part down. This is where the roots go. And this is where the stem comes up. So you want to plant that part down. These little small clothes that in the center that aren't worth anything. There's another one that rotted. That one looks looks soft. We're not going to plant that. So what you want to do is look for the largest of the cloves because the larger the clove, the larger the whole bulb is going to end up being when you harvest, at least from what I read. So we're going to do that. So this one, you can see you wouldn't want to plant this. This is really small. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stick that in my pocket. I'm going to taste test this by cooking with it. All right, let's look at this. Now you can see this bulb here. This is probably planted from a really small garlic bulb. But that one's pretty good size there. Let's see how these split up. These aren't bad, so we could plant these. So let's count them, and we'll just pick out the biggest ones out of these groups. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I have now. I do know that this is a four-foot bed. This going this way, and these have to be six inches. So that means that's eight of them. So I'm going to pick out the eight largest. One, two, eight, and then one, two. We were left with these. So that's six, seven, eight. We could do two rows, plant the small ones. Let's do that. Let's test it and see if that is really true. You know what? I'm going to do that. All right. So these are the small ones we'll put here, and these are the large ones. We are going to start this here. So what you want to do is we'll go ahead and just set them where we want to put them. So that's six inch, six, seven. That was only seven. Let's bring these in just a little bit. You can get that last one there. All right. So now we know that's the row, large. And I put it a little bit over on the side. We'll put this over so we can have six inches right in between. We'll be, oh, I did my math wrong. <laughs> that was dumb. Uh, so I have seven in this row and eight in this row, but they're all spaced out evenly now on here planting depth two to four inches So we're gonna make sure that they are down. So I'm just gonna push them down into the soil cover them back over This is super soft soil soil I can just push right in it took a while guys for me to get my soil down to being This good of quality really did it was a lot of effort when we first got this there just wasn't a whole lot of organic matter in it it was mostly clay and sand and so now that everything is breaking down it's all looking really good everything seems to be getting more and more fertile and growing i mean i've only been doing this for a short time there's the ink gelatin. Next is these Transylvania. We'll see how these look. I don't really want to be putting them in on soil in case I do bring some in to eat and try. So we'll just break this apart and throw them into this. Well, that's a big clove right there. Ooh, I like this Transylvania one. It's huge clothes. Really, really good size. These are all just real small. I'm not even going to mess with this one. This. I'll eat with, I'll eat those. These won't grow anything big. Let's see how many you have. One, two, three, I got 15. We'll get one more of these. We'll do 16, so eight in each row. 
I'm gonna keep this for cooking and see how this one tastes. So like the other one, I'm gonna scoot this over, separate these into two different size ones. I know that one's large, large. So the big ones, we'll get those first, we'll lay them out. Let's see, we'll put them on the left side here. All right, and just like last time, we're gonna push them down. Last and who knows if least, but I've never grown these varieties, is gonna be the Northern Rose, or the Nakuka, Nakuka Rose. So, I'm gonna say these are much smaller clothes. So. <laughs> Tiny. Definitely not gonna plant that one. Now, it's smaller clothes, but there's a whole lot more. That's a big one. Those are small, those are small. They're all small, but same as last time, we're just placing them down. The closest side to this is the larger ones, and these are the small. So next year, when we go and harvest these, we can see which are what. Now, one thing I probably should do is pat these down a little more. I didn't really, I just kind of sprinkled dirt on top. There should be a little bit of pat down. Get a little bit of firm ground over top of them. And that'll ensure that these are going to have good contact with the soil and keep them nice and moist. All right, there we go. Now, one thing I want to mention is usually I would come through whenever I plant something, uh, any seeds or whatever, and give it a healthy watering. And normally I would do that with this as well. However, it is going to be raining today um, quite hard. It just rained, in fact. You can see the puddles everywhere. And when I planted this, it was a break in the rain, but it's actually, I'm feeling a little bit of little mist in the air it's about ready to start coming down and so I feel like I shouldn't water it I don't need to because it might overwater. so I'm gonna let the rain do the water for me so it is November 21st and I've got garlic pretty exciting we've got some of the garlic shooting up here I'm watering it right now as you can see I got my drip irrigation going but most of the garlics here are popping up I'm, I mean a couple of them haven't but I've got quite a few in each of these rows popping up. Same here, all the way along, I've got them. The only ones that have not, except for one, are these. These are the Nootka Rose, and those, eh, I've got two of them popping up. But this was a bed, if you guys remember, where I was growing some black-eyed peas. So now that I tilled it and watering the soil, I got some of these popping up. Uh, they'll die in the winter, so I probably don't even have to worry too much about picking them, but I'm going to. I'm just every day coming out and picking those. Got to make sure they're those and not garlic. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe and hit that bell notification for future video updates. And if you could hit that like button, it would definitely help me out, help out the channel. And I will see you on the next video. Now you guys try to escape the day of the grind.